All right, hi there. Uh, my name is Alex Andre. Uh, I'm going to present on social networking for Joomla. Uh, the presentation today is going to cover, it's going to be talking about our extension, which is called JFB Connect, but the general idea here is it's not a promotional pitch. It's not trying to get you to buy our extension or anything. There are a lot of other tools out there that can do individual features that I'm going to present today. And the idea here is to more or less give you some information on things you can do with social networking on your site, and frankly, there's some things that you should be doing with social networking on your site. Uh, again, our extension does do all these things. Our, um, our product is a fee, is a paid extension for $60 for six months. There are other alternatives, and more or less choose what works for you, um, and we'll go from there. Uh, it's exciting for me to come back here. I actually attended Georgia Tech and graduated here in 2002, this building was, I think, an empty lot when I went here, so it's nice to be back and sort of see what's going on, but it's very different than when I was here, but still need to see. So I would have never been invited back by Georgia Tech themselves to present, so it's exciting to be back here. <laughs> invited by Joomla, because <laughs> that's the only way they were ever going to put me at a podium. Um, so let's, let's go on through. This is a Prezi presentation. If you've never seen one of these things, it's pretty much bound to make me nauseous. But it's the only way that I can make a pretty presentation because I am not a designer. So I am, again, Alex Andre. I started Source Ghost uh, actually with a business partner over here, Will, who since left. But uh, we uh, started the Source Ghost in 2008. We released JFB Connect in 2009, which was Facebook completely focused for multiple years. In 2011, we released an extension called JLinked, which was for LinkedIn integration. Uh, last year, in 2013, we added Google and Twitter support. And then in 2014, just about a month ago, we actually discontinued our LinkedIn extension and merged it into JFB Connect. So now it basically supports Facebook, Google, Twitter, LinkedIn, and some other components. Uh, JFB Connect, this is our promo page, because basically this is, you know, heck, got to try. Um, so when you're building a website, uh, one of the things you need to do, especially, you know, everyone always says have social networking to your site because, you know, you grow users and do all this other stuff, and it's amazing, blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's one of those things where you really need to have a social strategy when you're building a website and you're trying to integrate your social networking. Um, this slide a long time ago actually had, everyone's seen it on some website where there's a row of 100 different little social network icons no one knows what any of them are, and no one ever uses them. Um, those are very common because people think that if I put 100 different social icons on there, I'm going to get 100 times as much exposure. The end result is basically you get zero exposure because no one knows what the hell's going on. Uh, and so you really need to try and come up with a social strategy. Come up with some idea of what you want to achieve by adding social networking to your site. And there's a lot of different angles. I mean, obviously, you want organic growth. You want people to share their site with you. But there's a lot of other different facets that you can get into, and that's, that's basically what this topic is today, is to cover a lot of the different things that you can integrate into your site, and things that you can do that you either might not have been aware of, or different ways to do things that you were aware of, but you might not know exactly how to get it into your site. The most important advice I can give is go slowly. Um, again, you don't want to add 100 different social buttons to every page of your site. If you want to focus, if you want to start adding social sharing, start with just a Facebook like button. I mean, it's the most popular, it's the easiest way to go, and maybe you already have a Facebook page, maybe you're familiar with Facebook, maybe you're familiar with Twitter, so the Twitter share button. You can add, you know, two or three or four of the most popular things, and then if you realize that, you know, you're a music-oriented site, add a MySpace, there's MySpace widgets and stuff like that, which is much more music-oriented nowadays, but go down the route that's best for your site, and start slowly. Um, you don't need to add everything at once. Um, our product has 100 features, let's say. We never recommend that everyone uses every single feature in our extension. We try to provide them as tools, but it doesn't mean that from day one you should put every feature on your site. Because it basically, if you, the last line down there is the most critical thing. Your content is the most important. You can add as many sharing buttons and logging features and all this other stuff, but if you don't have good content, no one's going to share it. So focus on your content first and add social networking as a way to grow your site and enhance your audience once you have that good content and good audience there. 
<coughs> so go in here, social login and registration. This is what JFP Connect started out as. Um, and at first it was just for Facebook authentication. Uh, Facebook or login authentication in general, if you have a site that allows users to log in, I would say that you should have some sort of social authentication on your site. The reasons are you have less forms, um, you can create, users can be created automatically, so they just click a Facebook button, something they're familiar with, any of those other login buttons, something they're familiar with and they can get into your site. They don't have to fill out a form, they don't have to add a name, they don't have to create a username necessarily, they can, um, but they don't have to do a lot of the stuff, a lot of the steps that basically gate their process in getting into your site. If a user comes to your site, reads a great article and just wants to leave a comment on that article, they don't want to have to go through a whole registration process and fill out a password and all these things that they're not going to remember two weeks later and you know don't really care. They just want to leave that comment on your site. If you have social network authentication, you can control the registration process and make it much quicker and you can streamline the process for them so that way they don't have to upload an avatar, they don't have to put a cover photo on your page, they don't have to do all the stuff that they normally are gated with doing before all they want to do is get in and add that comment on your site. Now, question, when they do that, uh, does their information get logged into your database as a registered? Yes, um, so, and again, that's using our extension. Um, there are other extensions that do it, but we have a whole profile import thing. I don't think I have a picture of it, but you can basically, to different, um, there's the user con user profile plugin that comes with Joomla, which is a very basic profile extent, or profile um, integration, but we work with John Social, Easy Social, Community Builder, VirtuMart, um, Kunina and a couple other extensions, and you can import their their hometown, their city, their likes, their interests, their friends. Their, you can import just about any data from their Facebook profile or from any of their profiles that you want to import, which is great. And that, that actually leads into sort of the next thing. If you're running an e-commerce site, you absolutely should have some sort of social authentication because no one wants to fill out their hometown. No one wants to fill out or their, a lot of their city, their information. Again, if you want someone to buy something, if they put something in their cart, you don't want to put up a big form that they have to fill out before they can get into your site. And if you can import their name, you can import their city, you can import their zip code, you can import their state, all they have to fill out is the minor information as far as their address, those types of things, because the rest of the information is already imported for them, and they don't have to remember, again, their username, their password, and all this other garbage that a lot of sites have. They have 8,000 accounts in different sites. They don't want another password to remember. Um, increased return rate. Uh, basically, again, there's no no more user no user credentials to remember. They can just log back into your site when they get back there. Once they're there, they know that they have their Facebook credentials because everyone remembers those or Twitter or whatever. Um, so it's just less friction is the more important thing. And then again, filled out profiles. If you've added John Social or any of the other social networking extensions to your site, um, if you're a new site, you'll notice that most of the time, most of the profiles aren't filled in. They have the default avatar, they have no information in a profile. So you might have 100 users on your site, but if someone else comes there, it sort of looks like tumbleweeds are coming around because there's no information in any of the profiles and people aren't really interacting. When people log in through a social network, at least it fills out their avatar and fills in some of their profile details. Even if that user doesn't ever make a comment, the next person that comes to the site sees a bunch of pre-filled avatars and they actually think that maybe this community is actually growing and bustling those types of things. So it's just a way, even if the user that logs in doesn't do anything on your site, the next user that comes thinks that your community is a little more active. So it, it helps by filling out those profiles and doing that type of thing. Okay, related question. I've had people uh, tell me that they would never do this, and the reason that they'll never do this is because they don't want this site that they're visiting for whatever reason to know everything about them sure. from where they're connected. Absolutely. Is there a way to, to kind of fix that problem for them? Have them log in through Joomla. I mean, they can create. I mean, but they can create an account if they want to, right. and all of the social networks. Whenever you log in through a social network, it says, I approve this site to import my data. If they don't want to do that, they can log in through Joomla. I'm not saying that this is a panacea where everyone is going to be happy and everyone wants to use it, but it gives one more opportunity, one more wet method for some users who would prefer to log in that way to register that way. 
Um, I mean, again, it, it decreases friction for the users that want to use it, but there are certainly some users that don't have a social network account. Um, there's some that fear that, you know, the, the social networks or the government or whoever is spying on them and they don't want to ever register on any site. And that's fine. I mean, you know, it, it's not going to solve every problem, but it's one of those things where if you can give them the opportunity, the option to do it, it's not a bad idea because for the users that want to take advantage of it, it's going to make the process easier. And there, there are probably just as many people that don't mind sharing all that stuff. Sure. As are that do. There's, I mean, there's tons of people that have no problem. They don't think twice about it because they've already authenticated on a hundred sites before. So what's one more site? I mean, you know, it, it doesn't matter. And again, there is a uh, permissions box with Facebook that actually says when you when you set up the profile mapping and you say, you know, I want to import, import this user's hometown and I want to import this user's likes and interests that permissions box grows and grows. And so there is there is definitely, as an administrator, you have to be wary of what you're trying to import because if you try and import every single field, that permissions box is all of a sudden this long. And that is, you know, a little scary to some users, which is understandable because they don't want you to have everything. But by default, basically, this is my profile information, which is your name, your email address, and a couple of other little details. But if you want to collect more information, then you basically have to grant that permission, and that can thwart more users from getting into your site. So it's a balance. Um, there's there's definitely a balance to be struck there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, social sharing. Going be aside of uh, authentication, social sharing. If you don't even want to have um, authentication on your site, is move your your Facebook like buttons, your comments, your Twitter share, your LinkedIn share, all those types of things. Um, these are really easy to add to your site. And they're one of those things where, you know, even though they've been around for five years now, they're extremely still relevant. Um, it's, it, they go into users' profiles. If they like your page, they like some content on your site, if someone clicks that button, it, it pushes your brand out there in front of that user and that user's friends. And that can't be understated. It's free advertising. It's one of those things that basically, if you if you have a blog or anything like that, you should be having Facebook like buttons on there just because it's such an easy way to get free advertising. And it's one of those things where if you have an article that all of a sudden gets 100 or 200 likes, you get an idea that that might be what your users are more interested in. And it helps you somewhat gauge how your content's going to. If you don't have comments, or even if you, even if you have a comment section, you might not be getting many comments on it. But all of a sudden, if you see a bunch of Facebook likes come in, then you start to realize, hey, this is this is actually sort of what my users are interested in. They might not be engaging with you, but it's still a good way to gauge how your audience is actually reacting to your content. So it's it's good for you as a feedback loop, but it's also great as far as just organic advertising. Yeah, if, if you have a blog on your site and you're auto-posting to your social media, how does, does Google consider that duplicate content mm -hmm. or? No, um, if, you, if, you're, if you're posting your content to a social network, I mean, they, Google understands the social networks. I mean, in general, you shouldn't be posting whole article contents to your Facebook page. In general, you should be posting a snippet. We'll be getting into that in a little bit. Um, but I mean, you know, you, you want users more or less to come to your site. So you should be using, we'll get to it in a second, but open graph tags and more or less setting the details that will post to Facebook or whatever social network. I'm, I use Facebook as a generic term, but any of these are relevant to any of your social networks. Um, you set up the, the social meta tags and that will guide how your post actually is created on the social networks. Again, we'll get to that in a minute. But it shouldn't be duplicate content because you shouldn't be posting your whole article to any of those networks is basically what it comes down to. Um, things to watch out for when adding social buttons. This is, um, this is really important, especially with Joomla. Um, everyone's seen on their website, there might be seven different ways to get to the exact same article. There's the SEF URL, there's the non-SEF URL, the index.php. Um, you can get there with an item ID on your URL. You can get there in a ton of different ways. And that's one of those things where Facebook and all of the other social networking tools, um, <clears throat> when you share a link, if that link is different, um, if you use the SEF route and the non-SEF route, and someone likes both of those, you'll get one like on each page. You won't get one like on the same page. You won't get two likes on the same content. And so you need to really make sure that you get a tool 
that understands how Joomla routing works. There's a lot of um, a lot of tools out there like Share This, which is a great generic tool for adding social buttons to your site. The problem is it doesn't understand Joomla routing, and so when you add it to your site, you'll actually get maybe five or ten likes spread across different URLs. Um, a good example of that is if you have a Joomla blog. There's a whole blog, you can add the like buttons at the bottom of each article, but generally the like button would actually be for the current page, the blog view page, not for the destination article. Because if you add like an add this button, again, it doesn't understand that this is just a snippet of the article, the destination is on some other URL. So you really want to make sure that whatever tool you're using is going to understand and generate the proper URL for your social sharing buttons because otherwise you're basically going to spread out your like count and it's not going to be able to help engage your users the right way because they're going to be going to different URLs and if this, someone comes to your page they're only going to see two likes when really your page might actually have 20 or 30 or 40 which is much more important. Um, so again, you want to you make sure it, you, it generates canonical URLs. Whatever tool you're using generates the best URL for the page you're on. Even if it's not the actual page the user's looking at, you want to generate a canonical URL, which is the URL that is the best guess URL for the page. And I know that might be a little confusing. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, but you really need some tool that understands Joomla routing. Um, <coughs> And then in general, there's broad versus narrow integration. Um, some extensions do a little bit of everything. Some extensions, like ours, used to just focus on Facebook for a long time, and that's all we did, and we were very proud of that, and we were very happy with that. Um, we do more extensions now, but or more social networks, but we still don't support like MySpace, we don't support SoundCloud, we don't support a lot of other extensions out there. We try and stay pretty much focused on the most popular social networks out there. And then there's a lot of other extensions out there that support every social network out there, but it's sort of a very light mix of what they do. I mean, you know, if you, if you go wide, you can't really have every feature out there, and that's why you just have to pick whatever is right for your site. And then conflicts. All of the social networks use JavaScript to do what they're doing, and all of the social networks will have some sort of JavaScript conflict with something on your site. I mean, it just generally happens. It gets better over time, and they're always improving their JavaScript to not not complain with jQuery and those types of things, but you just need to be careful when you add things, make sure that you test a lot and you're not causing other problems on your site with other extensions or the social networking in general. Can you give us an example of how one of those conflicts might manifest itself? Uh, the social sharing buttons don't work, or let's say you add a social networking extension to your site and all of a sudden if you're using a reviews extension, like Day Reviews, which is a great extension, um, Jay Reviews is very JavaScript, Dependent, um, it will. You click like I want to add a review, and it'll open up a beautiful comment box and all that stuff. Sometimes the the JavaScript that you've added from some other extension, like a social networking thing, can conflict with their JavaScript. So now all of a sudden you click that submit a review, and your review box doesn't open. So it's one of those things. I mean, that's just sort of general Joomla uh, guidance. When you add some extension over here, it can break another extension over here that's completely unrelated. Um, and all these things, again, they're very, all the social networking stuff is very JavaScript dependent. And so just test everything. I mean, whenever you add any new extension, test all of your old features, especially the critical ones, to make sure they're still working like you expect, even if it's unrelated to whatever you just added to your site. Uh, additional sh social sharing considerations. Uh, uh, comments. Facebook comments, um, discuss, any of those types of things, they're always great just to get a conversation going on your site. If you're going to put up blog posts, have some way for users to interact with you. Not everyone has a Facebook account necessarily, but at the same time, most people do. And so just putting a Facebook comments box at the bottom of your articles is a great way to get engagement going. And again, like a like button, you get some feedback from your audience on what their interests are, how they received your article, and those types of things. Uh, fan box, if you have a Facebook fan page, you can show the stream from your Facebook fan page on your site. Company widgets, if you have a LinkedIn profile, if you have a LinkedIn company, you can show information about your company, you know, company size, your little motto, and all that stuff. And again, that's one of those things where if you're a company, 
putting a LinkedIn company badge just on your site gives you a little more stature. I mean, not, not that being on LinkedIn really means that you've made it in the world, but it's one of those things where if someone else looks at your page, they say, hey, this guy's got a LinkedIn profile, and he's up here, he's done this stuff, and it just gives you a little more stature, which again, if you're selling anything, if you're trying to be authoritative on any sort of comment that you're making, saying that you're on LinkedIn, helps and it's just one more thing that sort of helps your brand out and does those types of things you don't always think about it but putting just a company badge on your page with your company profile really sort of helps make you look more authoritative on whatever subject you're on uh, your twitter stream if you're, if you're active on twitter put your stream on your page if you're not active on twitter don't put your stream on your page because it's one of those things where the last post you made was four months ago, it's not relevant anymore. You shouldn't be advertising that you're not active on social networking. Um, a lot of people do that. A lot of people will put a Twitter stream on their page and then they never update it. So their last post was like, you know, happy, happy, Merry Christmas to everybody. And four months later, it's not relevant. And it actually makes you look worse when you're trying to promote that you're not active on social networking. Um, JFP, we have over 50 social, 50 widgets. Um, in a, included in our thing, so those are four right there. There's a ton of little social networking widgets out there, and again, choose what's right for you. Embedded posts, actually, this is a new thing that both Twitter, Facebook, and Google support. Embedded posts, if you have um, some great comment that you put it on your Facebook page or uh, on, your, on your profile or Twitter or something like that, something you want to call out, um, if you have a sale, if you have something special you want people to see, using an using an embedded post is a really good way to do it because maybe you made, made that post three days ago and you have a sale going on for two weeks. It's a great way because people can see that you're active on Twitter, they see what post you made, they might actually start following your account so they'll see the next post that you make and then they're aware of whatever sale or promotion or whatever you're doing right now. So embedded posts are a really good way to highlight some event uh, from your social networking site and then also to hopefully draw users into that site again to follow you in the future. And so it's just a good way of sort of tying in a good way to promote something special, but also hopefully get more people to follow you in the long run. Social meta tags. So this is a can of worms is basically what it comes down to, but social meta tags are basically in the good old days of SEO, basically you just had a title tag or a description tag, and Google would go out and figure out, is your description tag good or is it sort of bogus that you just try to keyword stuff, and they'll make up whatever's good for your page, and they'll, they'll pull in the right tags for you. Nowadays, it's a lot more confusing because each social network more or less has their own social meta tags. Um, and the main reason that they're different is because Google doesn't use images, whereas obviously all the social networking sites use images, but there's a lot more context that you can provide in these. Now, uh, the open graph meta tags, they're, they're um, hidden tags that are in your page, they're just meta tags, so an end user not necessarily, is not necessarily going to see them, but when you create a post on Facebook, basically these tags will be taken. So this, this right here is just a comment that we made. But this information is actually pulled from our website from the social or from the open graph meta tag. So you can decide what the title is going to be, what the description of the page is going to be, and what image is going to be shown for that page. And you have complete control of that. Everyone's gone, uh, maybe not everyone, but if you've ever gone to Facebook and tried to create a post of a page and you paste the URL in there and the little RSS icon shows up or some other completely unrelated image of your page shows up, that's why, because you don't have an open graph, open graph image tag set, and so therefore Facebook has to more or less guess what image is best to represent that page. Sometimes they'll take the first image on the page, sometimes they'll take the biggest image on the page, sometimes they're just, I, they go bananas and pick whatever they want, um, it, but it's random. When you set the open graph tags, you are telling Facebook, don't go pick my RSS icon, go pick this image, go pick this title, and you get to set exactly how you want your page to be presented. That's really important because obviously when you're posting your content, you want it to be your brand, your reputation, how you want it to be shown. But even more important, if someone finds some article that you've created and they want to share your article, 
you get to control how your article is going to be presented to that user's friend. I can't stress how important that is because if someone shares a link from your site and the link automatically gets the RSS icon, it's going to look pretty ugly. Even though that user is sharing that with content with their friend, it's not going to be very engaging. Whereas when you can control that message, especially that someone else is going to promote for you, you should do it. And so it's one of those things where with JFP Connect, you can control basically everything about every page, how the title is going to get set. And we try to automatically generate that stuff because, again, we know Joomla, so we know what your article contents are. So we're not going to take your uh, some module description that you've created over here and use that as your description. We'll generate what's good for the page, but then you have the ability to override it as necessary. So open graph tags. This is what Facebook uses, this is what Google Plus uses, and this is what LinkedIn uses. So open graph tags are extremely important um, because basically by setting those three things, and there's a ton of other options out there. Um, there's For open graph, there's a ton of different settings you can set out there uh, as far as, you know, you can have multiple images, you can have the language for your site, you can, I think there's 100 or 200 different default settings that you can choose to set. But the three that are most important are obviously your title, your description, and your image. And so that should be, you should try to set that on every page, in this, or at least on every critical page of your site. If you have a product, if you have a page that's very frequently visited, that's popular, that page you should definitely be setting those three tags on just so you are controlling that message. Uh, open graph actions. This is a this is a great way to actually engage with your users if they <coughs> register on your site using Facebook. The open graph actions is solely open graph tags are used by Google Plus, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Like I said, open graph actions are strictly limited to Facebook itself, and open graph actions are a way that you can automatically post activity that users are doing on your site back to Facebook. Uh, and these are meant to be, you know, if you, if you have any friends on Spotify, you've seen an open graph action message. John is listening to whatever song. Um, they're, they're things that the user is doing on your site. They don't necessarily get high um, priority in a user's timeline or anything like that, but they show up in the user's ticker, um, and the, friend, the friends of that user get to see what they're, they're doing on your site. And it's a good way, if John comes to your site and he uploads a bunch of images to your, an album on your on your website, a good site. We have a web, uh, we work with a client who has a big soccer page, and so he's always having users upload different pictures of soccer, uh, soccer game that was over the weekend. And so it's great because all their users upload these images, and then they get posted back to Facebook. You know, John uploaded this image of soccer game twelve this weekend, and so then that user. Whenever that user's friends are on Facebook, they say, hey, John's uploading all these photos on some random site. I've never heard of the site, but they can click that link and they go directly to the image that they uploaded and they get to understand a little bit more about your site and what's going on there. Facebook is great for a lot of generic things. Um, I mean, you know, birthday parties and those types of stuff for what your kids are doing. But if you have a site that's really targeted on a niche, Facebook isn't necessarily the greatest way to promote that or to contain everything about that niche on on Facebook itself. That's why you build a website. That's why you're doing these things. So if you have a soccer-based website that's really just devoted to soccer, this is a great way to promote it. You get it out there. You set up these open graph action tags. So whenever anyone interacts with your site that's in your niche, it gets pushed back to Facebook, but then it draws users back to your niche on, uh, on your website. Basically, I'll show another image over here. This is basically what shows up. This can show up in the user's timeline, it sort of depends. There's also the ticker now that Facebook has, which goes up in the corner over there, so you get to see all your friends, what they're doing on that random thing. But you know, Alex uploaded a gallery. Right? That's just what we called it. Um, but it's basically you uploaded an image into your website. Or even up here, there's a, a Alex covering up the post up there. But basically, this is how it's read an article on your site. If a user has looked at an article and is sitting on a page that's a, an article of contents after 10 or 15 seconds, you can post that to their timeline, just saying that, you know, this user is reading something on your website. And so, again, it's just one of those things where it's a good way to get your content posted back to Facebook and hopefully engage more users. 
the read art, the read thing doesn't really show up in users' timelines anymore, but again, it shows up in tickers and different activity and those types of things. So it's still just a good way to engage with your audience. Uh, quick, one, Please. Now, now I know why some goofy, uh, goofy images from my site show up on other sites like that. Have yep. If I go back and fix this and set that tag correctly, yep. will all those goofy images get fixed? Mm -hmm. Generally, uh, if, you're, if your page is really popular, let's say you have a thousand likes on a page, if you go and up update the open graph image, it might not update all those likes. Um, and the reason for that is Facebook doesn't want people to game the system. They don't want you liking, uh, getting an audience to like one page and then all of a sudden, let's say, replacing it with porn, um, which has happened many times in the past. So they don't, they don't want you to try and game the system. But as long as, as long as it seems relevant and you, know, you haven't changed the whole context of your page, generally those previous likes will get updated. It can take some time, and again, that's sort of one of those things. If you have a thousand likes, it might take a month for Facebook to say, okay, this is legitimate. Now you've gotten 10 more likes on the page. People still are engaging with this site uh, or with this article that you know, you've updated. So it, it can take some time, but if you only have five or 10 out there, generally those update pretty much immediately. Um, so th those are things, yeah, you can go in and you can, you can change it, but again, if you change the context completely, Facebook might start giving you a couple black marks because they're a little worried about whatever you're doing. Yeah, it's not that high quality. Sure, uh, but I mean, th those are things to be wary of. And those are things, you know, Facebook, it's amazing what Facebook's seen and what we've seen just working with it because there are a lot of things out there like that. I mean, you know, people will put up one article that's like, click like and, you know, I'll give you a coupon. And then two months later, all of a sudden that article is completely different because they've gotten all these likes. Now they want to promote something else. and. You know, Facebook's very aware of all the different things you can do to gain the system. Um, Twitter cards. This is this was introduced by Twitter about a year ago, I think. Um, and basically, you know, Twitter's 140 characters. You can't really get a great message across in there if you're trying to do trying to do promotion necessarily. Twitter cards are just like open graph tags. They have their own different syntax, and there's a different way to present things. But basically, when you include a link. To a page, if you have the Twitter card set on there, you can again control your your title, your description, and your image, and that's extremely important because that way your Twitter message doesn't necessarily have to convey everything about it. We can talk about. I don't even mention the fact that there's a change log in my post because now that's already contained in the message down there. It's a much better way to convey a lot more 140 characters because you don't have to convey everything in there anymore. Um, you know, I don't have to say see the change log. I don't have to do a lot of the things that I used to have to do because it's already contained in there. Um, one really, really important thing to know is if you're using Twitter and you're trying to set up these cards, you have to get approved by Twitter after you set up these Twitter tags for them to actually show on your site. Basically, you implement the tags and then you go to a page on Twitter, which I don't have the URL up there, unfortunately, but you have to submit your site to Twitter saying, you know, please allow my site to use these tags. Once that's done, you'll, your site will get approved. It takes about a day and it's not a big deal. Um, but once your site's approved, then these little snippets will actually start showing under any, any uh, content on your site that's linked to, whether it's from you or from someone else. And again, it's a great way to control the message that gets out there. If you're posting it, great. You want to control the message. But if someone else is posting your content, you really want to control that message. And then there's much more uh, social meta tags out there. Google Plus actually recommends using the schema.org microdata, which I think is going to be in Joomla 3.3 somewhat. Um, but they support Open Graph, and Open Graph is generally the way we recommend because that way you can control things with just one set of tags. You don't have to control all these different tags. Um, Pinterest has their own rich pins tags, which is basically another way to set your title, your description, your image. But it's a whole different syntax. And then there's a lot of other different tags out there. Each social network somehow decides that they want to have their own social meta tags. It's wonderful to deal with. Um, so more or less, you're your HTML can get very cluttered with a lot of hidden tags, and you basically just need to figure out which ones are right for your site. Uh, page tab and Canvas integration, this is relevant to some users, but not everyone. Basically, if you have a Facebook page, um, you can create a page tab, 
And this is basically a window into your website. Uh, the way that I like to recommend people use this is if you want to start engaging your users, if you have a sales site, you can basically do all your sales through Facebook and it's nice because you're within the Facebook world and it sort of looks like you're almost a part of Facebook. And that's a good way just to engage with your users. But it's also, um, when you do the Facebook page, it's uh, great for just showing a coupon to your Facebook page people. Um, great for signing up users to a newsletter or just promoting that there's some update to whatever you're doing. I mean, you know, you have a sale going on, you have new store hours, whatever. If you have a good Facebook page audience, not all those people really like going to your website, using a page tab is a good way to more or less integrate the two with your Facebook page and your website. So, uh, so you just confused me. Are, are we embedding on, so I'm my gonna show you. on my on my Facebook so page? The way a Facebook page tab, basically this is your Facebook page. This is a really old page of ours apparently. Um, and this right here is your page tab. So this is something you add into your into your Facebook page. So when a user clicks this button right here, they are brought to this right here, which if you've used Joomla 2.5, you've seen this before, probably seen this before. This is basically a Joomla 2.5 site embedded within Facebook. And so you can point to whatever URL on your site that you want to do. Again, it can be a sign up form, it can be a, a coupon, it can be one article on your site, it can be whatever you want it to be. And it's completely navigable. I mean, this is a fully working Joomla site right here. They can scroll down. They, if this is a blog, they can click into articles and they can read it and it's all within Facebook. And so some users, um, some of these Facebook page tabs look just like Facebook. I mean, they look like they are completely a part of Facebook and you can use a whole different template on your website just for this Facebook page tab. So if a user visits your website, they see one site, but if they actually view your site within a Facebook page tab, they see a whole different template on there. And again, it just, it helps with familiarity because they're within Facebook, they know what they're doing and they don't feel like they've gone to a whole new site at that point. And so there's a lot of good uses for this. There's a lot of really bad uses for it. Um, I mean, it's, it's one of those things that depends. If you already have a good Facebook page audience and let's say you're just launching a new website, this is a great way to sort of migrate the users from your Facebook page to get them familiar with your website and get them more engaged with your site. If you already have a really established website and are trying to build a Facebook page, it doesn't have as much relevance because at that point, you don't really want the nav users navigating your site through a Facebook page tab. But it is, I mean, you know, it depends on your audience, depends on what you're doing, but this is just one of those options that you have available to you as a way to integrate your site with Facebook a little bit more. It's not for everyone, but it actually can work out really well. Again, if you have a good Facebook page audience, this is a good way to get them into your site, to sign up for a newsletter, to promote a coupon, do whatever. This, uh, this, pay, this, uh, this title right here is completely controllable. So a good thing that a lot of people use, will just say coupons, and they'll have a picture of a coupon right there. So it's great. People click on that because they come to your Facebook page and they see coupons. They click on it and they actually are brought into the page tab of your website and it basically just lists whatever coupons you might have available or whatever sales you have going on. So it's just a good way to engage with your audience. Canvas area, this is a lot less useful. Um, most people will never use this. I generally don't recommend it unless you really have a design target in mind. Uh, basically, instead of, instead of being within your Facebook page, this is a whole web, it's, you're basically taking away the page tab up there and you have a whole URL within Facebook that just shows your website. So it's not related to your Facebook page, it's not related to anything else. It's just basically you want to run your website within Facebook. There are a lot of good reasons for that. Um, Farmville, a lot of those types of things, those games that you might have seen, those are all in Facebook canvas areas. Um, but unless you have a real reason that you just want your site to be basically Facebook only, you're not going to take advantage of this. Um, but there are shops and there are some other things that we've worked with before that people just want their site only on Facebook. So they want a Facebook URL because it helps their brand and it helps what they want to do. This doesn't avoid the need for a hosting service. Though. Nope. You're still hosting all your own content on your site, but again, you're basically doing it within Facebook's walled garden. So it looks like you're a little more, it, uh, it gives you a little more stature depending on 
if that's what you want to do. I mean, if you want to look like you're more or less, I'm not going to say affiliated with Facebook, but it almost looks like you are. You obviously aren't, but it's a way to sort of make it look like you're affiliated with Facebook in a way. Um, so it's not useful for most sites. There are a couple sites that go and do some amazing things with the canvas area, but if you don't know what it is, honestly, I keep it that way. <laughs> it's just not, it's, it's a neat thing to do, but you have to really have a business model behind it. Um, social channels. This is something we just recently added to JFB Connect. Um, and this is where basically you can just post your content back to any of the social network. So if you're on a new blog post that you just wrote or a forum post or you know, your front page or your change log or whatever, you can create these different channels, which are you know, a Facebook page or your Twitter stream, your LinkedIn company profile, or more Facebook pages. Um, you can create as many of these channels as you want. So it can be five different Facebook pages, a Facebook group, and two Twitter streams. And then any administrators on your site, when they're logged into your site, they'll have these two buttons down here. This is the create post button. And basically whenever they're on any page of your site, they can click that button, create a little message, and then select wherever they want to post it to and just click the post button. And that message will automatically get broadcast to all those networks. Um, the advantage of this is obviously you don't have to go to four different in this case, four different social networks to post the content. Um, a nice thing about it is also you're on the page, you have that little social toolbar, so you just sort of keep it in your mind that you should always be posting, because that's one of the hardest things as far as any, any website administrator, there's always so much you have to do in a day that you create some great content, you just don't always think about posting it to every single social network out there. This makes that task a little easier. Uh, another nice thing is that if you have a website that's managed by 30 people, let's say, they don't actually all have to be managers of your Facebook page now. They can just be, you can configure them in JFB Connect to be allowed to post to your Facebook page, but they don't actually have to be a manager of the page, which is a good way to sort of control, control some of the restrictions on what you want to do. They don't have to have access to your Twitter account, but they can post to, they can post any page from your site to your Twitter account. Um, which is just makes it much, makes things much easier to manage in, in the long run. Does it uh, work with EasyBlog and other extensions? Or? Uh, the, the nice thing about this is this is actually URL based. I mean, it's basically any page on your site. Um, eventually, we'd like to actually have some automatic posting to where you know you have a plugin for EasyBlog, you have a plugin for Joomla content, and all these things. And if you publish a new Joomla article, it would automatically post it. We, we've been very, we're sort of against automatic posting in general. Um, I, don't, I don't recommend it. We're going to implement it. After two years of people kicking us in the pants to tell us to do it, we're finally going to implement it. But it's not something I'd recommend. Honestly, when you publish an article and it automatically gets broadcast to all these social networks, it is nice. It's very easy. It's very convenient for you. But you lose so much control at that point. Because generally when it gets broadcast, you're not creating a message to go along with it. Um, when you're in a Facebook page, if all of it is is just little snippets of all the articles you've created, but there's not sort of an engaging, hey, look at what I'll, look at what I just put up there, you know, tell the world about your great content. It's it's one of those things where I really don't recommend the automatic posting in general um, because you don't get to control the message as much. It's nice to introduce your users to whatever you're just posting about and also you get a lot more control over the time you might want to post your blog post at 8 in the morning on a Tuesday but you might not want to tweet about it until Wednesday at noon and that is important um, it's very important RSS feeds are read at different times than Twitter is read I mean Twitter is generally read at lunchtime if you look at stats so you want to post to Twitter at lunch Facebook pages those types of things post to those things around noon wherever your audience is, and you'll actually get more engagement. Whereas you might want your RSS feed or your article contents to go up in the morning because people can generally roll around to that whenever they want to. Um, so if you publish an article and it automatically, it automatically posts to all these different social networks at the same time, you're actually losing a little bit of the audience that you could have. It's minor, um, but it's there. And again, you get to control the message. It's really good if you have, especially, you know, you can create this, you can click that create post button six different times and create different messages. And you're like, 
hey, Facebook fanboys, look at this night great new post. I mean, it's a good introduction, a good way to sort of talk to your users uh, and let them know why they should read whatever you just posted so to their site. From the front end, from clicking the post from the front end button, you can select yep. which ones you're going to. Yep. All right. Yeah, so you basically, you just, there's check boxes over there. So gotcha. Ugly interface, so it'll be cleaned up eventually, but uh, we're not designers. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you click which ones you want it to go to, and so, you know, if you have five Facebook pages, you can create the same intro for that, click post, and then you can create a new post just for Twitter, and you can create a new post for your LinkedIn company. Um, but it, I guess going back to your original question, we don't have integrations with certain extensions because this is all from the front end, so basically any URL you're on, you can post. Um, and that was the way we wanted to go at the beginning because we don't want auto-posting and we wanted to work with every every extension out of the box. And so this basically just works with any URL on your front end. It doesn't, Daily Connect doesn't care if it's an article or a, a forum post or whatever, a, an album, whatever it could be. Uh, what if you saw it that you just shared it? Can you unshare it and will it disappear from all those other places? No, I mean, that, that's something. If you, if, you're, if you made a mistake, you'd have to go and delete them all from those different sites. I mean, that, that's, that's life. <laughs> And I think that's it as we all get a little nauseous on the rollout here. So, I mean, those are, again, those are a lot of different things. Everyone's seen social authentication. Everyone's seen the social network or the sharing buttons. Hopefully the last three things I talked to, or at least the last two things, the social meta tags and the Facebook page tab are things that you probably haven't heard of or maybe not have seen, but hopefully it gives you some ideas on this deeper integration that you can do that you might not be aware of. Again, it's not all for everyone's site, but the things that you might want to do. Anyone have any questions on things? The last one, will that be able to go through? Yeah, it goes through. So um, the social posting, social channels, that works for Facebook pages, Facebook groups, Twitter streams, and LinkedIn companies right now. And we'll be adding a lot more. That's not good enough. But right now, you can post any of those. And the idea is that you'll actually be able to start pulling in feed from all those A, B, and X rows. We'll see. Thanks. Um, I know. Someone raise your hand. Anyone? Hey, you got a shirt. Just a comment. You know, I've used Roger. JFP. You want a shirt? There you go, ladies. That's why you raised your hand. Second, you asked a lot of good questions. So, I have a, you want a red component subscription? Why not? All right. And let me get your name after. <laughs> what was your question? I, I've used JFB before. All right. I'm glad I gave you a shirt. Yeah, and the nice thing about it is you don't have to spend tons of time in Facebook developers. It's you set up your thing and everything works right out. <laughs> glad to hear it worked that well. Well, the social. Apparently not. The, uh, <laughs> the create post. Uh huh. And that. I was having some issues with that. Okay. It, it, it wasn't bringing up all the groups that I moderate. Okay. Um, is that? So the, the thing when you set up a social channel, um, there's different permissions for that. Okay. And so when you, and, and it, it's just not a tedious process, but a, there, there's a couple hoops you have to jump through. Okay. And basically, we obviously don't want to ask the manage per pages permission or manage groups permission from every user that authenticates on your site. Right. So in the admin area, basically what you do is you say, here's the user that owns the groups. And you save that. And then that user actually has to log in again on the front end. Okay. And when they log in again on the front end, they'll be presented another permissions box which says, yes, this site can manage my permissions. Okay. Or manage my pages, manage my groups. Okay. So then, after you do that, then you can go back into the admin area and you should see all the list of groups that you control. Um, again, it's a little more tedious, but it also makes it so that way, again, you don't have a permissions box for everyone that says manage groups, because that's the first way to get people not to sign up to your site. Um, the, those are one of those things we're always trying to improve, make it a little easier. At some point, we may make it so the permissions pro prompt will come in in the admin area, um, but I don't know. I mean, but it, it is a little tedious. We have hopefully good documentation on it. But if you run into issues, obviously, I'm the support guy. Call okay. me. Or, I post it. Don't ever call me. <laughs> um, email me or post on our forums, and we'll okay. definitely get you going. Any other questions to go? Did you create a website on the commons area that you recommend? 
I'm sorry, what? When, when you create a website on the Canvas area of Facebook, yep. um, how, how the admin part, the administrative part, is also on Facebook or is it like in your own domain? I mean, all the content is hosted on your own domain. Um, it's hosted on your Joomla site. Uh, you can have a different template that's used when your site is shown in a Facebook Canvas or a Facebook page. Uh, so, which is nice, because that way you can actually have your Joomla site that looks how you want your Joomla site to look, but then you can have a different template just for Facebook, but it's all completely hosted by you. It's not, it's not in any way hosted on Facebook.com. They basically just pull your page and put it more or less into an iframe on their site. Just a little further on that one. When you're putting a new template onto Facebook, are you attaching to the article or module or... I'm sorry? If, if you're going to use a different template, mm -hmm. you know, for Facebook, yep. you just attach it to the article? It's, it's to the whole site. I mean, it's basically, it's basically like switching your template. If you go from bees to other bees, uh, I mean, you're basically switching your template. So, I mean, it's, it's just like if you go into the template manager and click a new template as the default, right. then that's sort of what you're doing on Facebook. Like that template is applied well, to everything. You can isolate the pages in the categories. Correct. Well, you, I mean, you say what the starting page is for the user in Facebook. Um, so you can have it point to just your category blog layout, let's say. And if you don't put any menus in there, if you don't put anything in that template view and that mo in any module positions on there, all it's going to show is your blog layout. And if a user clicks in, all they'll see is your article. Now, if you put a menu on there, they can navigate your whole site if they want to. I mean, but they'll be navigating it within that template view. So you you have the control when you when you apply a new template, you basically get to choose what shows in which module positions. And so if you just don't put a menu in there, you're and that's where, like I say, if you want a newsletter sign up, you can basically say, all I'm going to show is this one article in this template. And I'm not going to put any menu menus on there. So all the user sees is sign up for our newsletter or whatever text you want. And when they click sign up, it says thank you, and that's it. Like it's all done through your site, but they don't have navigation to go other places on your site within your Facebook page yet. So this is all good stuff, but really fast. And uh, you use it, does your website have some primers and more details? Oh, we have. We have probably 100 pages of documentation and different things. Um, I mean, again, most of it is going to be on how to use our extension, but we have so much documentation on our site because we, we want you to be able to figure it out on your own. We don't want you to have to come to us to ask us questions. I mean, I, ideally, the extension explains it, or our documentation explains it, or in the worst case scenario, we'll explain it. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're, we're Source Coast, or whatever. Go to sourcecoast.com and Hopefully you can find it. If you can't, send me an email because I'm really happy. We've done something.